This video was made possible thanks to the EA Creator Network. Hi everyone, it's Chrissy and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a world overview of the brand new world, Tomerang, that's coming with the Sims 4 for Rent expansion pack. Now, quick little disclaimer. I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce even half of the lot names, neighborhood names, family names, anything like that. So if I mispronounce anything, please forgive me. <laughs> but yeah, also my accent doesn't lend itself well to pronouncing words that I don't know. If I even get some English pronunciations wrong half of the time. So yeah, please forgive me for that. And also another thing before we get into this world overview, we're just going to be sat looking at the gorgeous map for a second. But you guys will see my name floating around the screen and like popping around the screen. That is something that's actually on the game. It's not something that I have added. It's because this is an early version of the game. It is a special version of the game. It's not my normal game. So this is only base game and the new pack. And yeah, just a huge thank you for EA for like allowing me to be a part of this process or of this like special early access, I guess, event you could say. And also just want to say that this is not the final software. So if there are any bugs or glitches or anything like that, just be aware that this is not the version of the game that you guys will be getting on the 7th if you buy the pack. It's still an early version of the game. And a lot of the bugs have already been reported to the Sims team and they are looking into it. So yeah, if there are any bugs and stuff like that, just keep in mind this isn't the final software. But yeah, so with all of those little disclaimers out of the way, I was thinking about doing a face cam for this video. But honestly, it's been super hot today and I have had an incredibly busy day. I look like a freaking drowned rat or something. Not the picture of myself that I would like to put up on the internet. So we're not doing face cam today, unfortunately. But yeah, so we're going to start off with the world tour by looking at the gorgeous new world icon. So this is the Tomerang world icon. And if my name would move, I could read you guys the little blurb. It says, grown from humble roots off the coast of Shisi, Tomerang is lively with local fare, community chaos and legends of lore. Known for its tight-knit communities and sun-filled shared spaces, Tomerang is a lush landscape of possibilities. Come cozy up with nature or fish around for neighborly, neighbor, neighborly niceties and whim simsical secrets, okay. Whether you're flying solo or raising generations, this region offers a warm welcome to any multi-living lifestyle. Sul Sul Deka. I, yeah, I... I like I said, mispronouncing everything. So yeah, we have two neighborhoods in Tomerang and there are only nine lots. There's five lots in this bottom neighborhood and four lots in the top left. Now I know some people will not be happy about that. I was not happy about it when I first got this and saw that for myself. I really was hoping for a bigger world, especially one that's this gorgeous once we get into it. But considering that you can build apartments on any lot in any world, I kind of understand why this world might not have been like, I guess you could say the main focus of this pack and why they might have spent more time and, you know, budget, I guess you could say, on the actual gameplay. So I do get that. And you can actually fit quite a few apartments on a smaller lot. So. Up here in the top left, we have the Morin Song neighborhood. It says a bustling neighborhood with pockets of idyllic peace and nooks of neighborly nuance. Morin Song is the spot for vibrant communities to thrive day or night. Stroll through the botanical garden or throw down in a game of playground hopscotch. Apparently, I cannot read either. Even join the night market buzz for some sunset shopping and moonlight munchies. The possibilities are endless. 
so yes this area is actually where the night market will be taking place like you know the night market that you probably saw in the trailers and stuff like that and up here we have two of the biggest lots we have a like botanical national park lot that's a 30 by 30 the Zoe Sultaman Botani it has a little lot description. It says, filled with luscious flora and fauna, this garden is a welcome place to relax, restore, and reconnect with nature. So that's a little natural, like, botanical garden that they talked about. We also have this big, empty 40 by 30 lot, the Rokaya Rockside. Apart from the dense, apart from the dense streetways, this rocky headland delivers a picturesque view of Shisi. And for those who like a bit more bustle, it's only a hopscotch away from the beloved night market. So this is really close to where the night market is. We also have a empty residential lot. I'm not going to even try and pronounce this name. Like, I am just not. It's a normal residential lot. So it's not an apartment building or anything like that. It says, center to all that Morin Song has to offer, this renovated shop house is perfect for any lively lifestyle with an out on with an out on the town attitude. And then we have one apartment, I guess you could say building, on this in this area. We have on the 20 by 20, we have Taka Soy 15. And this one is actually occupied. There's two apartments. So there's the one on the bottom floor, which is a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment. And then upstairs, we actually have a two-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment that is owned by the Kaya Putri family. Again, so sorry for mispronouncing everyone's names. It's actually where Vanessa and her niece, Zafira, actually live. So we saw um, Vanessa in one of the trailers, or like, I think both of the trailers, I'm not sure. But yeah, she's actually actually raising her niece. And it says, since the unfortunate microwavable water incident that resulted in the loss of their parents, Kaya and Wulan, Vanessa has had to take on major responsibilities, both as big sister and guardian. So yeah, sorry, I was wrong. It's not her niece, it's her sister. It can be hard juggling a teenager and tenant shenanigans all under one roof. So Vanessa is the owner of this apartment building, so she is the landlord and she also lives here. And yeah, she is raising her little sister, not her niece. And the lot description just says a one floor walk up to an expansive space overlooking the neighborhood. It's not super like fancy. I believe that's the description for the top one. And yeah, the bottom one says a simple dwelling with life's necessities and an ease to accessing city life. So it's basically like a perfect space for one sim, basically. And that, you know, that maybe want to, wants to be close to the main city, bustling city center. And then over here, we have the Kosapas, again, so saying it's so wrong. Neighbors with nature or other tenants, Kosapa offers a more relaxed lifestyle along the river. After a dip in the sea or some much needed beach time, gather around, gather around at the Screaming Gecko for a drink or two. Visit the visit the Soul Sea Tiger Sanctuary to support local conservation. No matter the choice, Kosapa is the ideal spot for a go with the flow attitude. So we actually have a, a lounge in this area, not a bar, like surprisingly enough. We have the Screaming Gecko, which is a 20 by 20 lot. We also have the Sungai Point um, like apartment building on a 30 by 20. We have an empty lot where I just have a random sim called, what is this lot called again? It's the Aizda Riverfront. It's a 20 by 20. We also have where the Ban Ma family lives. And this is a, I believe, a 20 by 15. Yeah, 20 by 15. The Hothotokshur. Hothotokshur, I think. And then we have Tam Nang Sands. A 30 by, yeah, 30 by 20 empty lot. Now, a lot of people were wondering if we were, if we were going to be able. I cannot speak to access the tiger sanctuary and you can actually see it over here in the bottom corner that's where the tiger sanctuary is i'll show you guys it in a little bit more detail once we hop into the actual neighborhoods 
but for the screaming gecko it just says an open air local hotspot for social gatherings and steamy exchanges whether you're here for live music the curated cuisine or just taking a dip it's sure to be a scream <laughs> Then we have Sungai Point, which has, I believe, three apartments. Yeah, we have the Lin Saja family up top. They're actually the owners of this apartment building. And it says, when it comes to the Lin Saja, Saja household, it certainly takes a village. Caring for both a child and elderly, grand and elderly parents, Lien and Elon have their hands full. Luckily, with multiple streams of income, making rent is a breeze. A bustling house, on the other hand, is cause for some chaos. Luckily, it only takes a step outside to, to regain some peace. And then for the lot, like, info, it says grandiose and lavish. This suite is close to town essentials and oozing with decorative possibilities. Then downstairs, we actually have the Lynn household. She's the aunt, I believe, of one of the other families. Yeah, of one of the, like, Lin Saja household. So it says, a household of one may seem lonely, but not with T's entire family living above her. Wearing the badge of weird aunt with pride, T's quirky existence extends beyond her interior decorating. However, not everything can be included in her open book. Sometimes solitary has its... Co Sometimes solitary has its confidential perks. That feels like a typo somehow. I feel like that's supposed to say, to, to say like sometimes solitude or something. But anyway, has its confidential perks beyond concealing her clown painting. <laughs> and then the lot just says this. The bright side is that the clown painting can, re can be removed once the tenant clears out. So yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> And then the, there's also a little empty apartment that is a two-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment. And it just says an enticing unit for any family just getting started. That it also has mold though. I believe all of the... Yeah, so I don't think all of them have mold. I believe that's just the bottom one that has mold. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, there's a little bit of a challenge with that one. Then we have the empty lot, which, you know, nothing very interesting not going to read you that one's like info. We also have the Tam Nang Sands and catch a glimpse of aquatic life floating by or soak up the sun. This inspirational site comes with beachfront access and exceptional views of Koh Sapa's crystal clear waters. But it also has the off the grid lot rate. I didn't even notice that. Or lot challenge, I guess I should say. And then we have the Ban Ma household. And they just live in a regular residential lot, but it says from tradition from traditional roots, the Banma family relies on strong familial bonds to get them through life's ups and downs. Bua insisted his insisted her son's family move in with her so that she could help raise her grandson Sud. He can be a bit clingy at times, but Bua cherishes being able to pass down her generations of wisdom while Kasim and Nin work hard and enjoy newlywed life. And the lot's information says, um, nestled, up, nestled up the shore, this cozy stilt house is settled just off the path into town. With luscious flora surrounding the grounds, anyone with a green thumb can feel at home. So yeah, those are all of the lots, you guys. I will have all of the lot sizes in the description as well, just in case I forgot to mention any of them or you couldn't remember. I, ha I will have all of them listed in the description. But let's go ahead, jump on into the neighborhood and take a look at some of the like scenery surrounding all of these lots. Okay, so here we are on the Ista waterfront lot. That's just the empty lot that I had my sim move into. Now, out the back of it, there's this little cute little jetty area where your sims can actually fish. They There's a lot of these, like, beach spots around where they can actually swim around. Like, they can actually go and swim in the water in this whole space. Like, they can swim all over this space. And this is the shot that was actually in one of the trailers. I believe it was in the gameplay trailer or something. Or maybe the announcement trailer. Where they like panned over this and like gave you a look at the town. I love this place. It looks so, so freaking good. But yeah, so we have this gorgeous bridge over the 
little canal bit but there's a lot of beaches around here you guys you can obviously just behind that house where or by, behind the lot that i was on but there's also this little beach space where you can swim you can swim all the way up to like i believe around here somewhere and yeah there's this cute little like almost hidden little river spot we have a beach all the way over here as well where you can obviously you would have to swim all the way over here if you wanted to get to this spot but yeah you can swim all the way over here you can swim all the way back here as well where there is actually a cave i did not know that i haven't had a look at this world this in depth yet so yeah, you can go and explore that cave. I don't know if it's similar to how the horse ranch one works or not. But we will have to discover that at some point. And if you guys discover that before I have a chance to, let me know down in the comments what actually happens when you enter the cave. So I don't know if that would lead to a secret lot. Or if it would be... I, I kind of want to find out. So I'm going to have my sim stop swimming for a second. And I'm going to get her over here and try out this cave. Okay, so my sim is over here. I'm going to speed up the game and have her check out this cave. Because, so, take a deep breath. I'm not going to read through all of that. And just, like, I'm just going to speed through it and see what happens. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I don't think anything will happen. No, she just came out. So let's do it again. See if I pick something else, if something else happens. Did you hear that? Okay, so I don't think anything happens apart from them gaining, like, certain moodlets. So, yeah, it doesn't lead anywhere, unfortunately. But, yeah, so we have all we have that little beach spot over there. <laughs> we have, obviously, there's a lot of gorgeous views. There's boats going around. And, like, you know, there's just, it's so gorgeous. I don't even know where I started. But, yeah, so, oh, yeah, here's that little, like, 30 by 20 lot, the empty one, with its own basically private beach out the back. There's another little boardwalk space over here. I'm just going to teleport my sim. And over here we have a little, another little fishing spot. There's obviously a lot of gatherables and, you know, stuff like that that you would expect now let me start where was my lot like i lost myself i got lost <laughs> oh yeah so we started over here so there's nothing else that way but going around this way this is where the ban ma household lives so that's where they live we have obviously the little bridge going over and this is more of like the like more built up space around this area it's not super like commercial or anything like that but it is a little bit more built up and that's where the 30 by 20 empty lot is we have this gorgeous tiger statue over here which is stunning the the world like the scenery and everything is just like chef's kiss it's gorgeous but yeah so there's a lot of like i don't know i feel like we have a botanical garden kind of close to where i am and this view, like with the lanterns and all of the foliage and stuff just like growing everywhere, is like, it's. I feel like it's something that I have seen and it's gorgeous. And yeah, so over on this side, we have a couple of, a lot of, there's a lot of shell buildings. Oh, there's actually a little thing that pops up when you look at the little tiger statue. I haven't explored a lot of the lore and stuff like that around this pack, but I know that there is a lot of it. I know the Sims team mentioned that they included a lot of different lore aspects and everything like that. So yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and read all of that stuff, go around the world and like click on all of the statues and stuff and see if you can view it or interact with it in any way. And see what happens. But yeah, on this side we have a lot of like shell buildings, kind of like little streets and alleyways. It's it's not like it's not interactive. Obviously, all of these shells are just shells, but it makes the world not feel empty, which I really do appreciate. So over here on this corner, this is actually where the screaming gecko is, and I haven't visited l this lot yet. But it looks kind of cool. Like, I kind of like the look of it. And yeah, I like the way that looks. So around this way, we have the... I believe it's the Sungai Point lot. So yeah, this is where those three apartments are. We have that. We have a little, like, square... Like, town square fountain space around here as well. 
there's like i said a lot of scenic spots for your sims to go to and to interact with and you know there's another fishing spot over there and i just i love the way this world looks it is a shame that there aren't more buildable lots on it but you know we just have to make peace with that fact, I guess. And then over here, we have another little bridge that your sims actually have to walk over to get to the Tiger Sanctuary. So this is actually where the Tiger Sanctuary is. It's on its own over the water. And yeah, so this is the Tiger Sanctuary. It is a rabbit hole, so you can't actually do anything with it, unfortunately. But your sims can click on it. They can visit the sanctuary. They can sneak into it when it's dark outside and they can also um, support it so they can donate stuff they can adopt a tiger as well and i believe if they adopt a tiger they actually get this cute little plush plushy toy thing in their inventory that you can find in the debug menu as well but yeah so they can do that and over here we have another statue that is actually one of those statues where it gives you a little bit of like a story or backstory or whatever that your sims can read and know more about and then just a little bench all of that stuff it's very pretty like i said but with all of that we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at the moran song neighborhood as well okay so here we are on the zosul something something botanical gardens that i cannot remember the name of but yeah so it's basically just a national park so there is a grill there is a bench there's you know a couple of seats around but it doesn't really have any other function apart from that. I'll probably be turning this into something at some point. But yeah, so we have this gorgeous botanical garden look with all of the like manicured plants. And you know, like you would find in a botanical garden, all of the manicured hedges and flowery plants. And the little pond over here, I love the way this little pond looks. We also have this gorgeous dragon fountain over here, which very pretty. Love that. But yeah, so there's not much to interact with in this space apart from the actual lot. Like there's nothing around here really apart from a couple of collectibles and that's about it. You can't even click on the fountain. But this would be a very pretty place for like proposals or stuff like that for people that do like gameplay stories and things. We also have these little pretty, I think these are like lotuses, lanterns in the water. And I do think that they like light up at night if I'm not mistaken, but I do think they do. I do think they do. Yeah, that's a sentence. But yeah, so over here we have a lot of like shell buildings again. There's a lot of shells in this world. Unfortunately, I really, really wish some of these lots were either bigger or like just more small lots like even if this was just like a 20 by 15 lot for example or even this one could have been like a 20 by 15 lot or something i don't know i just i wish more of the space was buildable <laughs> if i'm being completely honest but yeah so there's a lot of shell buildings over here we have obviously a lot of cars and stuff driving by we have this gorgeous town center like roundabout space that's really pretty and this is actually where the night market happens so we have these buildings like on the waterfront again even this building like or even this space like being able to build on this little space right here on the water would have been so nice or even these little buildings over here that one is interactable it's a fish market and you can buy like fish and stuff like that from it between 4 p.m and midnight so it's kind of part of the night market but yeah so where these stalls are, this is actually where the night market happens. So your sims can walk through here. It gets lit up at night, all pretty. We have a little outdoor toilet over there. And then not all of these stalls are functional. Some of them are just, you know, decorative. But the ones that look like this, where you can click on them, they are actually going to open up at night and be part of the whole market thing. And it's open between 6 a.m. and 2 a.m. Not 6 a.m., 6 p.m. and 2 a.m. But yeah, there's one. There's, I believe, another one over here. Yeah, there's a little food one over here that, you know, pops up. There's another one over there as well. But yeah, they wrap around this space a little bit, which I think is really cool. And your sims can interact with the areas around here. Like, they can sit on the by the tables and, you know, sit and eat and mingle, stuff like that. There's another little one over here 
with some more chairs. I love the way this looks. Like, this is so freaking pretty. Like, <laughs> I just, I love the way this world looks. I, I won't lie about that. I do love the way this world looks. But yeah, we have another fishing spot over here. We can walk all around this little boardwalk space. There's an easel all the way out here, which imagine painting from reference and like painting some of the views you can see from here. That would be so nice. So yeah, imagine coming here on like vacation and like painting a picture or even just taking pictures of the views and like hanging them up in your house. That would be so nice. But yeah, so this is where that little freestanding shop house is on the 20 by 15 lot that you can either move into or build on or whatever. And where is the other... Oh yeah, all the way over here. So your sims can go all the way over here, you guys. This is where the Rokaya rock side, I believe is what it's called, the big 40 by 30 lot is. There's, you know, some gatherables around it and all of that stuff. Views like, you know, you wouldn't believe. And then over here we have the, I cannot remember the name of this lot, I apologize. But this is where Vanessa and her sister actually live. So this is a 20 by 20 lot. It's right by this little playground area. So we have some play equipment for kids. We have a little hopscotch court. We have space for them to practice and play marbles. And then there's a lot of these pretty little gazebo spaces all over the world as well, which is really, really nice. And that is basically this entire space apart from this temple. Now, I will admit that I don't know a lot, a lot about Southeast Asian, you know, architecture or the significance of a lot of things like this temple, for example. Apart from the fact that it is absolutely gorgeous. It is stunning. And I love it so freaking much. So as you guys can see, it is starting to get like darker. And I believe the night market. Yeah, so here's that little thing all lit up. We have these little lotuses all lit up as well, which is so pretty. Where is the night market? Oh yeah, here's the night market. So as you can see, it, it, it gets absolutely gorgeous at night. It's not even super dark yet. And you can already see how beautiful this is. Like, this is absolutely freaking stunning. Like, I am obsessed with this world. <laughs> like I said, I am obsessed with this world and I really, really wish it was bigger for that exact fact. The fact that I am so obsessed with it. But yeah, so basically you get a little pop-up telling you just a little bit more about the place and your sims also get a little moodlet if they visit the Tinsu Temple but yeah, that's basically all that is. It's just a little like interactive rabbit hole kind of spot, I guess you would say. So yeah, you guys, that is basically it for this world overview. But yeah, you guys, with all of that said, I really, really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give the video a like. If you're new to the channel and want to see more Sims 4 for rent videos or other Sims content, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on notification bell as well to be notified of whenever I upload another video. A huge thank you, I just want to say it, a huge thank you again to EA for making, allowing me to be a part of this event and, you know, giving me such early access to this pack so that I could make these videos for you guys and also to my channel members for always supporting the channel. I really do appreciate all of you. But if there are other videos that you might like to see me do with this pack, obviously I probably won't be able to do them until I have the pack in my actual game. But if you have other suggestions for videos, again, leave them in the comments. If you have any questions about the pack or about the world or anything like that that you, you know, aren't sure about or anything, definitely drop those in the comments as well. I will obviously get to all of your questions and if I don't have an answer right away, I will try and find an answer for you. And yeah, I, like I said, I will also have all of the lot sizes written out in the description in case you missed them. But hope you enjoyed this, hope you're having a great day, and I will talk to you all in my very next video. Bye everyone!